So are you a glass half full optimist or a glass half empty worrier when it comes to our future with AI? And yes, I know we're not literally halfway through the AI journey. In fact, we're barely at the foothills, but you try finding foothills around here. It's also a pretty tricky visual metaphor to pull off. Anyway, back to the glass. It's pretty clear where Professor Patrick Glauner sits on this metaphor. He's a self-declared optimist. He would be. He's a professor of AI at the Degendorf Institute of Technology in Germany. And he told me for Transform Talks how he defines AI. Well, recently everything sort of seems to be AI. AI means to me automating human decision making. So we make about 30,000 decisions a day, both in private and at work. And AI aims at automating that so we can make decisions faster, better and cheaper. OK, and with your students, as I understand, they work with industry as well. Is that correct? What, what, talk to me about some of the collaborations that you've had. Yes, my university is a university of applied sciences, so we're very close to industry. First of all, to be hired as a professor, you need to have real world experience in addition to your academic background. We usually require that you have worked for at least three years outside university. We work very close with industry. For example, in my case, I bring in companies for guest lectures. Uh, we do projects, uh, term projects, lab projects together with industry. But our students also need to do a mandatory internship during their studies. And what, what does that benefit them? How, how do, is it just about getting that hands-on practical experience? Well, there's obviously a huge gap between academia and the real world. So we try to bridge that gap by working closely with industry. So our students first get the theoretical framework and then they see how it actually works in the real world. And they benefit a lot. So employability goes up as well as entry salaries. And tell me, you've got, I understand it, the Innovation Management for AI course that you run. And, and what's unique about that in your view? When I started my professorship, I knew that most projects, AI projects in industry, actually fail or don't add any value. So there are certain market reports that say some 80% of the projects finally are just prototypes, but they don't work out. And that's a huge problem. Mm. And then I wondered, is there any teaching on that, how to bridge that gap? And I didn't really find anything because most AI courses are extremely technical, which is important. There were some AI introductions for business people, but we're training AI experts. So I felt we can bridge that gap and I came up with my unique course, Innovation Management for AI, in which I show students real world problems in addition to technical problems. So how to manage AI experts, what roles you need in a company, how to handle budgets, um, but also we look into AI regulation, patents, and how to transform a company into an AI driven business. Without asking you to summarize your course in the sort of a minute answer, just I'm fascinated that 80% fail. That is a huge failure rate. Yes. What, why is that? What, what is, because I, the perception would be that AI is this great sweeping success, but you're saying it may be, but an awful lot fail along the way. But well, there are a lot of wrong expectations from executives. They sort of think that AI is a silver bullet. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, they just don't really know what to do with AI. They just say, we want to do an AI project, but there is no business goal. And yeah, there are lots of challenges, and we discuss them in my course, and also how to solve them. So rather than being a silver bullet, it's a bullet that people are shooting into their foot half the time, sadly. Well, overall, AI is very positive, but you need to know when to use it and when not to use it and how to use it correctly. Talking of correct use, there's now the AI, or you're working on and involved in the preparation of the AI Act for the European Union. So what's your role there? The AI Act was proposed by the European Commission about two and a half years ago. Since then, I was an expert witness for two times in hearings of the German Parliament, once in the French Parliament and once in the Luxembourgish Parliament. And I advised the national parliaments on the AI Act and also obviously had other meetings with members of the executive branch. And what do you think the challenges are ahead then for AI in terms of governance, and in terms of regulatory sort of guardrails? Well, um, I think first of all, we need to take advantage of AI and be very positive about it. However, the European Union is quite negative. It's driven by fear, not by opportunity. Mm. And I think that's one of the main problems of the AI Act. How do you shift that? And that's very interesting that you feel it's a defensive um, stance, a starting point. 
How do you turn that into a more positive approach? Well, the AI Act at its current draft is 140 pages mm -hmm. with just requirements and maybe how to avoid AI. But there's no single page on how actually how you can actually take advantage of AI, how to invest in it as a government, and what you need to do to take advantage. And I think we should shift that. Obviously, we may need some rules, but maybe we can narrow this down to two pages that people actually understand. And what would you pick out then, if you were summarizing it, to say the opportunities of AI in industry or, or across society? What are the things you'd point to to say, this is the potential that we could realize? All around the world, there's a huge lack of well-trained experts, and we have an aging population, both in Europe as well as China. So AI can be of tremendous benefit to bridge that gap. For example, in healthcare, um, we are not aiming at replacing doctors, but maybe we can make healthcare more accessible and can deliver better healthcare. Uh, AI is also an enormous potential for sustainability. We can use resources more efficiently. And I think we're just scratching the surface what is actually possible. You've, you've preempted my final question because it's pretty obvious what the answer is going to be. But I was going to ask you, when it comes to our future with AI, are you a glass half full optimist or are you a glass half empty worrier? I'm very positive about AI, and I think we're just scratching the surface of what is possible. And I'm really excited about the coming AI innovations that will help us to have a more sustainable and a more prosperous and healthier future.